Math 171, Module 1, Domain of Functions. In this problem, we are being asked to find the domain of several functions. Let's begin with Part A. To find the domain of a rational function, like the one we have here, we need to look to the denominator. Now, in a rational function, we need to make sure that the denominator is not zero because it's impossible to divide anything by zero. So what we have to say is that the denominator is not equal to zero. That's symbolized by the equal sign with a slash through it. We can solve this like we would any ordinary equation. We can start with x minus 5 is not equal to zero. Notice that we are not doing anything with the 2x here. It actually doesn't matter what the 2x is as long as the denominator is not zero. Let's try to get x by itself here. All we need to do is add 5 to both sides. We can cancel out the minus 5 and the plus 5, and we'll be left with x is not equal to 5. To find the domain, let's draw a number line. We can place negative infinity on the left, and positive infinity on the right, symbolized by the arrows. Now we know x is not equal to 5, and any time you see a not equal sign, that is represented by an open circle on the number line. So we place an open circle on the right side here and label it 5. That 5 is going to cause a break in the number line, which I'll symbolize with the dotted line. That break in the number line will split the number line into two pieces. Piece A on the left, piece B on the right. To write the domain, let's look at the boundaries of piece A. Piece A begins with negative infinity. We'll write that first. Comma, the place where piece A ends is 5. Then we put either parentheses or a square bracket around these numbers. Now infinity is always open, and so is negative infinity. So we'll put a parenthesis around that. The 5 is also open, so we'll place parentheses there as well. Now we can move to piece B. Piece B stretches on the left from the 5 over to the right, which would be infinity. Infinity is always parentheses, and since the 5 is open, we place parentheses there as well. To symbolize that these pieces are linked together, we place a little u in the middle, meaning union. So our domain for part a would be negative infinity to 5, union 5 to infinity. Now let's look at part b, square root of x plus 3. To find the domain of a square root function, we look to the inside of the square root function. The inside of a square root function cannot be negative, but it can be positive or zero. To write this, we say greater than or equal to zero. So let's look to the inside. It says x plus 3. And we'll say that must be either greater than or equal to zero because it can't be negative, because square root of a negative number is not a real number. Now to solve, let's get x by itself. Subtract 3 from both sides. Now the 3's cancel, and we'll have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Once again, let's draw a number line. We'll label the left side and right side with our infinities, negative on the left and positive on the right. Let's mark the negative 3 on the number line. Now since this says greater than or equal to, this will be a closed circle. The reason why it's closed is because it will include the negative 3. Now to show the domain here, we are going to say that greater than negative 3 is toward the right side because that is where the positive numbers lie. This means everything in the region that I am shading now will be part of the answer. However, everything that is not part of what I just shaded is not part of the answer. If we go left, that would be less, and that is not what this sign here says. 
I'm going to X that out to show that that's not part of the answer. So our domain will be the piece that stretches from negative 3 to infinity. So we write negative 3 comma infinity. Now infinity always has a parentheses because it's not a number. Now the negative 3 was closed. To show that negative 3 is included, we draw a square bracket around the negative 3. And that will be the domain for part b. Now let's put the two pieces together. We have a function with a square root and a denominator, and we are to find the domain of this. Now we already found that x minus 5 was not equal to 0 earlier in part a. When we solved that, we got x is not equal to 5. However, since we also have a square root as well, we have to think about that too. We can say x plus 3 was greater than or equal to 0, and so x was greater than or equal to negative 3. So we have two things that we have to take into consideration. We can draw a number line graphing both of these conditions at the same time, because both of them have to be true to be inside of the domain for the function that we have. So once again, let's draw a number line. Let's place our infinities on the left and right, and place an open circle at 5. Remember that not equal was open. And place a closed circle at negative 3. Now remember, everything less than negative 3 was not part of the answer, but everything greater was part of the answer. So we'll x out everything that is less than negative 3. So we are only taking into consideration the things to the right of the negative 3. Now the open circle at 5 splits our number line into two regions, a here and b here. So let's try to write the domain. Piece a begins at negative 3 and ends at 5. The negative 3 is closed, so we'll say negative 3 comma 5. Put a square bracket on the negative 3 because it's closed. Since the 5 is open, we put a parenthesis here. Now since we have another piece coming, we say union. Now we look to piece b. Piece b begins at 5 and goes to infinity. Infinity is always open, so a parenthesis goes here. And the 5 is also open, so a parenthesis goes here. So our domain of this new function that combines part a and part b is negative 3 to 5, union 5 to infinity.